Dear Holy Spirit of God, Jesus says that when you come, you will teach us all truth. We ask, Lord, that you will teach us truth concerning this word that was in the beginning. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I welcome you to another session on our theme, In the Beginning Was the Word. Today, we're going to be looking at what we have titled, Full of Grace and Truth. And you see that in John chapter 1, verse 14, we says, And the word became flesh. This word was full of grace, you know, and of truth. Amen. Now, I want to say, I, I, I want us to recapitulate what we've done so far. We said in the beginning was a word. This word was with God. This word was God himself. This word shines as light in the world. And there is nothing that can stop this light. Now, this word now became human. Amen. Praise God. This word took upon himself the form of a man. And the moment the word took upon himself the form of a man, he became known as Jesus. The word was not known as Jesus in eternity. The word was not known as Jesus before he was born. The word became known as Jesus after he was given back to. Before he was born as Jesus, he was known as the word of God. Hallelujah. We demonstrated that in the past from, from the book of Revelation chapter 19, you know, beginning from verse 1 through 16. Amen. Praise God. So when the word took upon himself the form of a man, he became known as Jesus. That is, the Son of God, who is divinity, became the Son of Man. That is, the, 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 that is humanity. And then he lived, of course, even among men. Amen. Now, the disciples, while they were on the Mount of Transfiguration, in John chapter 17, verse, verse 1 to 5, they saw the glory of God. They saw, they saw Jesus Christ, you know, in his fullness. Amen. They saw the divinity part of him. When he walked on the earth, most of what people saw was his, his humanity. But on the Mount of Transfiguration, God opened the eyes of this disciple to see this word who was in the beginning and has always been with God. Amen. Now, our title indicates that there are two things that characterize this one who is the word that became human. And these two things are grace and truth. Amen. Now, grace is the operational ability of God in a man. It is what God gives you that enables you, that empowers you to be able to do whatever God has called you to do. Grace is also the sovereign decision of God to see a thing in a particular way. You may not see the thing that way, but it's the sovereign decision of God. He chooses to see anything the way he wants to see the thing. Grace also means attractiveness or a pulling force, like a magnet that is able to attract any metal that is within its radius. And so this is what grace is. Amen. Now, when Jesus came, Jesus did not come with some measure of grace, not at all. The scripture says he was full of grace. Everything about him was grace. It was Grace was overflowing in his life. He was not deficient in grace in any aspect of his life. It says he was full of grace. Amen. Now, every other human being that has lived on the earth, including you, is some measure of grace that you carry. But in the case of Jesus Christ, who is the living word of God, the Bible says that he was full of grace. Amen. Now, the scripture didn't say it was only full of grace. It says it was full of grace and truth. That word full of is not used for grace alone. It's also used for grace, you know, and truth. That means that the life of Jesus Christ was saturated by truth. There was no falsehood in him. There was no deception in him. There was no lie in him. Amen. Instead, he was full of grace and of truth. Amen. Praise God. And if you look carefully, for the scripture to say that he was full of grace and truth, it means that grace and truth are intricately connected. You cannot have grace without truth, and you will not have grace with lies, but of course, which constitute the opposite of truth. The more of the truth of God you have in you, the more of the grace of God manifests in you. Jesus was absolutely full of grace and truth. Now, I need to ask you, how truthful are you in your dealings with God and even the sons of men? Do you tell lies, whether you call it white or black lies, little or great lies? A lie is a lie. Is there falsehood in your life? If God is to examine your life, if God is to expose you on an x-ray machine before everyone in the world, are you going to be ashamed because of falsehood or because of this deception or hypocrisy that you have, that you have exhibited? Are you a man pleaser? Do you like to show off? The Bible says that Jesus was full of grace and truth. Grace and truth 
was overflowing in him. May grace and truth overflow in your life. May God bring you to the point where you are saturated with truth. That there is no falsehood, no lies in you. And that the grace of God is abounding towards you. In Jesus' name, amen.